Hello friends. Today we are going to discuss another approaches to represent graphs called graph neural networks. So far we have looked at node embedding, edge embedding using shallow embedding techniques. Now what we are trying to do here is to use not only adjacency metrics but also certain properties of nodes or edges to learn graph representation. One way to represent adjacency metrics in a simple paradigm is to flatten it or any other similarity measures which we have used in previous uh, classes, we can use them and just flatten them and supply those adjacency metrics and corresponding features as a inputs. Let us look at a simple example of just adjacency metrics right now. So, I have a graph. I can convert this graph in terms of adjacency metrics. Here we can see we have generated an adjacency matrix for this particular graph. Now, using this graph and this agency matrix, what we will do is we will concatenate all the rows of the matrix to form a vector where the uh, A flat is a flattened version of our adjacency matrix. And what we are doing is each row is actually flattened. So, we will have a row number 1, row number 2, but it is in a form of column. So, so each R1 is a vector of dimension V and we are going to repeat for each node which we have a V node. So, we have a total V square uh, V into V cross one dimensional vector. Now, as we see that the, the element of this particular vector which is A flat is either 0 or 1. Now, we have this vector from our earlier studies, we know that I can use this vector for a particular graph, pass through feed forward neural network and get a representation of this particular A flatten matrix or I got a representation for graph. Now, there are certain issues with this particular representation. Let us look at what are the issues. One of the biggest problem in this particular representation is here the nodes in a adjacency matrix are arbitrarily ordered. Different adjacency matrix can be written with a different ordering of nodes. I can change u to v, v to w and this ordering will lead to a different kind of agency matrix. Of course, the graph remains sense, but the structure of agency matrix depends on the order in which we have actually considered the nodes. And then this leads to understanding of two properties. One is called permutations invariant and another we will call permutations equivariant. So, what are these properties? The first property which is a permutation invariant says the following. If I take a permutation matrix P of appropriate dimension and I pre multiply and post multiply with a P and P transpose to my adjacency matrix and take a function of that, then if this permutation function is invariant then I will get F of this operation is invariant, then I get f of a. In permutation equivariant, instead of getting f of a, I will get permutation into f of a when I apply the same kind of operation. What does it mean physically is the question we should ask. 
So, permutation invariance typically actually ensure that output which is a function, a function of f does not depend on the ordering of rows and the columns. It ensures that whatever permutation you do it, the output will not change. In permutation equivariant, the output will change, but output will change accordingly when the ordering is changed because of this permutation. We look for modeling approaches which allows us to have a permutation invariant. However, permutation equivariant is also fine in a up to certain extent. And if you recall, all the cello encoder decoder which we have studied previously are permutation equivariant functions. They change depending on the order if you recall, but still we can actually figure it out what is the representation. However, in general for a complex a task, simple paradigm which we described earlier where we just flatten the adjacency matrix will not work. Particularly when we have feature associated with each node or even edge, this will make, make life more complex and some of this paradigm cannot be used. Hence, we have to look for a different paradigm which allows us to learn over a graph and that, that paradigm is graph neural networks which allows us to learn and ensure that permutation invariant and permutation equivariant kind of properties are hold. In graph neural networks, there are two kind of tasks which we typically look for like we have studied in earlier classes node focus task and the graph focus task. In a node focus task, the objective is to learn good features for each node. Here we can also have feature associated with each node as a additional information. In a cellular embedding, we did not use any feature associated with the node. Here we are going to use feature associated with each node. In a graph focus task, we want to learn good features for the entire graph. So for a given graph, I want to learn features using the graph structure as well as node features. In this particular approach, there are intermediate steps where we try to learn better features for a node and ultimately those node features which are learned are going to pass to create a good features for a particular graph. How can we learn graph focus features, node focus features using the structure of graph and features of node? We are going to look at graph filtering. Here we use node features and the graph structure both to actually refine graph uh, node features for each node. So here you can think of this particular filtering where h is a graph filtering function. Here the f in is input feature mat matrix which is of dimension v cross or coordinate of the v cross d i in. d i in is a number of features associated with each node and we have feature for all the nodes. We have an adjacency matrix of dimension cardinality of v cross v. We have a function h which act upon the adjacency matrix and input feature matrix to create the output feature matrix which is of dimension cardinality of v cross d out. Here the f out is a learned feature after applying the graph filter. 
What is graph filter? It is an operation to refine the nodes feature affine using the structure A. Remember that we are changing F in to F out in terms of the feature learning. And here you can also see that the number of feature here are different than number of feature in the input. Typically, as we recall in any machine learning task, we want to have a less number of feature than we started with. So we always want D out to be lesser than D in. That's why we learn compact features which can be used for a downstream tasks. So framework for the graph neural network, let's look at the simple one, is following. I have a graph, you can see here, I have a graph with uh, six nodes and uh, for each node I have a feature vector. This particular vector consists of four features. I want to apply filtering, which we discussed earlier, so that I get a new feature vector associated with each node. Remember that the structure here and structure here is same. If you look at A here, remain same, A here remain same. There is no change in the structure. However, when I apply graph filtering, I get to change my input feature F in matrix to output feature F out and actually D in is greater than D out. Here you can say that feature now associated with each of this node is a, of a smaller size. Here we have a four features, we have now compact two features after the graph filtering. Hence, filtering operation typically will not change the graph structure. The adjacency matrix or similarity measure we have used to represent graph structure is remain same after filtering operation. In a node focus task, what we can do, we can actually apply several filters or in other words, we can multiple iteration of filters to actually improve because our main object uh, improve the features because our main objective is to start with these features, let us say F in which is the one and we want to keep applying these filters and get a better feature at the end of the filtering operations. So we want to learn better and better representation of node features through this filtering operation. These are all filtering operations.